So solving quadratics is like a whole chapter in your textbook. It's a whole section in your class. And, the, and there's a bunch of ways to solve the quadratic. Remember, there's like the quadratic formula. You can maybe do it by completing the square. Or you can um, solve a quadratic by factoring. And, you know, whatever. There's a video on all of these. I made a video for each one. But we're going to talk about solving quadratic by factoring. First of all, this thing right here, one thing I know that's confusing for kids is like, First, for like a whole chapter, they're factoring. And the answer is left in factored form. And then later, they actually are supposed to get like an answer. And they don't know, when do I factor and I'm done, but when do I actually have to end up with an answer, like x is 2 and x is 5 or whatever. And the answer is this right here, what I've written on this mysterious floating plane of air. This can't be solved because there's not an equal sign. So if I was doing homework, if I was in a book, I would know that I'm supposed to factor this, but I'm absolutely not going to get an answer. Like, x does not equal stuff because it doesn't equal anything. Then, like in a few pages, the minute this equals 0, now I can not only factor, but then I can solve the quadratic and get the answers. So instead of writing this, which I did, now I'm going to write that equal to 0. And now this is absolutely a problem where we're going to solve the quadratic for two answers. Uh, and we're going to do that by the method factoring. We could do any method. We could do quadratic formula, completing the square, arguably even maybe graphing, which wouldn't work. Probably forget that. But I like the factoring method if it's possible. Now, first of all, something that's cool and a pretty deep concept is how many answers do we get? Right? Like, so in algebra, we get one answer for x, but quadratics, now we're going to get two, whatever. The real, the, the actual explanation is the largest exponent in the original polynomial in this case, 2, tells you how many answers you're supposed to get. So if I had like x to the fourth plus blah, 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 a bunch of drama, I would know that I would expect to find four solutions because the largest exponent is 4. I know. That was that's a good tip. Okay, so, so here we have a normal, you know, okay, so x squared minus x minus 6. I know that at the end of the day, I hopefully I'm going to end up with two answers because the exponent was 2. And I'm going to do it by the factoring method. Let's factor the sucker. So I go x and x, right? And now I'm looking at this, and this is kind of hard. I know that the, these two numbers here have to multiply to be negative 6, but they have to add to be negative 1. There's not a 1 in front of the x, but there is a 1 in front of the x. So they have to multiply to be negative 6 and add to be negative 1. This is really hard. I'm like trying to think. I get that probably 6 and 1 is not going to work because that, that wouldn't add to 1. So let's try 3 and 2. And since I know that they multiply to be negative, one's a plus, one's a minus, right? And I'm thinking, well, if they add to be negative, probably the bigger guy is the negative. And even if I think I'm smart, I still recommend you checking, right? 2 times x is 2x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. When they multiply, it totally worked out. I'm a genius. Okay. Now, beyond the factoring, right? So that's factoring, and we probably even, you probably saw me explain that like last night when you were partying watching my videos. But anyways, factoring aside, now what do we do? Because I'm not supposed to just factor, I'm supposed to solve for two answers. How do I do that? Because these equal zero, I'm going to give you more of an explanation than you won't, but I like to talk and more friends. This is something, I'm going to call this parentheses a guy. And this parentheses, a guy. And they're multiplied. And you agree that in multiplication, if either one is 0, the answer is 0. So it doesn't matter what b is. If a is 0, right, a time, or 0 times anything is 0. So that would, be, that would qualify. That would make this work. If a was 0, this would make this work. Similarly, if b was 0, a, anything times 0 is 0. So if b was 0, it would work. OK, so what that means is I take each of these guys and I separately set them equal to 0. First guy, x plus 2 equals 0. Other guy, x minus 3 equals 0. And totally treat them as two separate problems, solve them, and those will be my answers. Look, oh, minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2, box it, circle it. This one, plus 3, plus 3, x equals 3, done. So my two answers to this problem are negative 2 and 3. And if you did it, if you plug negative 2 in, I bet you 100 bucks it will come out to 0. And if you plugged in 3, I bet you 100 bucks it will come out to 0. Uh, and that's how you do this. So again, you factor it. You set them equal to 0. 
and then you take each part and separately set them both equal to zero and you solve those. And that's how you solve a quadratic by the factoring method. And again, I don't even know if you're in love with the factoring method of solving quadratics. I am, I think it's cool. But if it's not as clean, then flip to the other videos, which is solving quadratics by some other ways. Anyways, that's it. And remember, if you're having a hard time with your math class at your local high school, uh, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, pass it there, and have the credits transferred back to your school.